Well, look, first of all, I'm glad to see so many people have come along this evening, uh, and I hope you do find it worthwhile. And I'm particularly pleased to see so, some young faces here and the students from uh, Tiddington High School that have come, uh, students of politics and history, I understand. And I remember when I did history in the sixth form, I remember reading about the, learning about the rotten parliament. Well, here we have young people who have actually now lived <laughs> through the existence of a rotten parliament. Um, and uh, as uh, uh, Martin was uh, indicating, it isn't just about expenses. It strikes at the very heart of corruption in our governments. It's about dossi uh, dodgy dossiers. It's about nepotism. It's about patronage. It's about lies, damned lies and statistics. Throughout the period, of, uh, not just this government, I think even preceding this uh, current government's period of office, that these things have been going on. My mother was a very religious person, and she drummed into us as children all those traditional values. First of all, being very religious, we always said lots of prayers. Not only did we say grace before a meal, we also had to say grace after a meal. But she was the woman who, when you said to her, oh, Johnny's got this or Johnny's got that, why can't we have one? She would say, if you want it, you go out and earn it, and you work for it. She was a woman, like many people in those days, it was make and mend. You don't just get new things, you make use of the old things. And it was all those traditional values that she embedded in that gave me a, what I call a conservative approach, much to the horror of my father, um, uh, who could never understand what did he do wrong that I ended up being conservative-minded and not as red in, in, in tooth and claw like he was. I ought to say, by the way, that uh, many years later he withdrew completely from po politics, totally disillusioned with the way his beloved party had gone. But I think that's, that's the kind of thing that a lot of people has happened to a lot of people. And it's when I was saying about it's, all, it's more than just uh, expenses, I think one of the worst things that's been happening is the betrayal of the active supporters of political parties. Numerous people I know in all political parties are so disillusioned with their leaders who don't stand by the principles which they thought they espoused. And it's affected all parties. And one of the things that struck me, struck me in, in, in this talk about uh, uh, the expenses is I looked up the Green, the Green Book to see exactly what did the Green Book. That was the rules which governed the expenses. And it actually said this that any, any claim for expenses had to be above reproach. Any claim for expenses had to be necessary to perform the duties of Parliament. And every claimant had to take full responsibility for their expenses. One of the cases I dealt with as a councillor concerned a young woman, um, single mother, who had been on benefit and then got a job but continued to claim her housing benefit. And she was found out and was prosecuted. And this young woman was so mortified and so ashamed of what she'd done, she didn't dare tell anyone in her family what had happened. And she came to me for help and advice of what she should do. Well, of course, she had cheated. She knew she'd cheated. She had to take the consequences. The terrible thing was that she worked for a company that was subject to security clearances. And because she was prosecuted under the Theft Act rather than the Social Security Act, she got a conviction which debarred her from the job she had. So she then lost her job. She was then too proud or too ashamed of what she'd done to claim any benefits then. She would determine she would find another job. She would do anything rather than claim benefits again. And she did fortunately find a job and now she's, as far as I'm aware, very, living a very content and lawful life. But when I think of that case, and I think of these rascals in, 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 in Parliament and what they've done, it makes me so angry that it's only four scapegoats who are actually being prosecuted for what they've done. Because if you read this, it's almost like the Inland Revenue uh, 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 instruction, that any claim for expenses must be necessarily and exclusively in connection with your employment. And if you do claim expenses that are not, don't fit that description, you will be prosecuted by the Inland Revenue for making false claims. And I just cannot understand why no, not just that only four people have, have been prosecuted. And it's all very well, I'm not going to pick on Cameron because he's a, he's a conservative, but he just sticks in my mind because he was so 
holier than thou, condemning his colleagues for what they'd done. And yet he was a man who had taken full advantage of the housing allowance to claim for a house, a one million pound mansion that he was buying in Oxfordshire as a second home. And that is at the very top. And to me, this is the most tragic thing about what's been going on. It's the example it sets to younger generations. It's the role models that we, that we now give to younger people. I don't intend to talk uh, uh, so much about policy issues. I hope you've all seen my um, uh, leaflets. There's the latest leaflet has been circulated to you. And there is a website which um, uh, sets out my views on a number, uh, uh, with a full range of policy issues. So I don't wish to bore you t uh, and keep you too long by just going on about what my view is on, on this or that. But of course, you can ask me of any specific issues that you concern you and you want to know what my view is on them. Because I think that what I'm really standing for, although I do have political views, and although I do have political views, I suppose, on almost anything that comes up in the newspapers, I make a judgment about it. What I'm really standing for is on the basis of values uh, and, and, and attitudes and ethics. When I hear politicians of all parties saying, it's time for change, we want change, and when you get down to the detail of it, it doesn't seem to be much change. I mean, when you get a suggestion that the change in education is that we're going to be able to build our own schools, I don't know how many people are going to set about building schools in this constituency. And if you go into deprived areas, I can't see anybody there having the motivation or capability to build and run their own schools. But it sounds good. It sounds like a change. And it's not a change of policy so much. It's not a yet another reorganisation. In my time in, the, in, in local government and in the, in the NHS, throughout those period, I was involved with six major reorganisations. I was much younger, less experienced, and greatly enthusiastic about these reorganisations that were going to do wonderful things for the community. And every time, realise, when you look back, you realise it ended up costing even more money than it was before and had even more inefficiencies built into the system. Not that people set out to do that, they set out with good intent. And the one thing I've learnt about reorganisations, it doesn't matter what reorganisations you do, how you change your systems and methods, it all comes down to the people working within the reorganisation. And that also revolves around not just the kind of people, the capability and competency of the people, but the attitude and, and morale and ethics of people. And when we have problems now with the NHS and in education, I share the views of those teachers and nurses and doctors who say, oh, not another reorganisation when another party comes in. Let's try and make the existing system work properly, work well. Let's do what it was originally intended to do. Because every time I've seen a reorganisation proposal, the preface which sets out the aims and objectives is always the same as the one that went before. So that's why I say that I'm standing on the basis of ethics and principle rather than policy. If you would like to help Brendan Murphy's election campaign, email brendan at voteindependent.co.uk or call 01625 262 173. You can also follow Brendan on his Twitter at vote for number four that is B Murphy.